Welcome, everybody. We got something a little bit new going on. It's not just the music that's new. We've got a new friend joining in on the Agile for Humans Goodness. Pratik, how are you doing, sir? Good. How's it going, guys? So Pratik so, is... Pratik. Yeah, what's up? He's very big in the Pro Kanban universe. And as you all know, Todd and I are big supporters of Pro Kanban and uh, the work that Colleen and Dan Vacanti and Pratik are doing. And so we thought we'd get together. There's a new class launching, actually, called Flow Metrics for Scrum Teams. Uh, we know Pratik's going to be leading a lot of these. Dan's teaching a number of them. Todd and I will be teaching with uh, Dan at some point this course, which we'll share with you a little bit later. But we want to get Pratik on here um, as one of the, the Pro Kanban uh, insiders and see if we could talk through some of these concepts, right? So we think it'd be kind of interesting uh, for us to do that. But first, Pratik, if you have like a quick intro for the viewers, this is probably the first time uh, the Agile for Humans space is going to see you on here. So real quick, a little bit about you and maybe like a little fun fact. Oh, yeah. Thanks thanks for having me, first of all. Um, glad to glad to meet all the Agile for Humans people. Yeah. Humans, Agile for Humans humans? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Nothing like that. <laughs> all the people. <laughs> That's yeah. a good point. That, that doesn't work, does it? <laughs> So, Pratik saying I'm head of learning and development at ProKanban.org and also an independent consultant. Um, fun fact. Uh, fun fact is that uh, almost everything I do, my dog is usually here with me. Yeah. But she's 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 getting gotten kind of older, so her up going up and down the stairs is restricted. She's not here right now. But that's that's probably the most fun fact about me because most people who come to talk to me, the first question they ask is, "Where's Nisha?" Uh, <laughs> not a bad thing. Where's Todd? Where's Ray? Yeah, Ray is uh, probably acting Ray over here. <laughs> yeah, she's not hanging out in the office today. So now the big question will be for the Agile for Humans uh, listeners and watchers: Does the rivalry between you and Dan Pratik does it does it rival that of the the, the back and forth between Todd and Dan, like how does lovely. that? Yeah, well, we'll, 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 we might actually have to do like like an octagon thing, like and and see. Yeah, see, see, see it comes out. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> All right, maybe that maybe we'll air that uh, in the future. We'll all get together and uh, see how that goes. But we do have an agenda here. Let's uh, let's start with. Applying flow metrics in sprint planning. I think that's a good topic because um, a lot of people, let, let's step back. I, I've been a big proponent of this idea that story points are trash and I've been beating up on some metrics and with mixed results. I think there's been a lot of positive, a lot of good discussion. Some people are kind of taken aback. They're like, wait a minute, what are we supposed to be using? Or they've always worked for us. And so we thought it could be interesting to actually look at you know, what is a solution here? You know, Todd, you've been pushing uh, in this direction too. It's like, it's it's fun to have these debates, but how do we actually help people move the ball down the field? Uh, you know, that's the old rugger in Todd, keeping, keeping yeah. the ball moving. Um, and so for these flow metrics and sprint planning, I think can help get us started on that conversation as well. So Pratik, when you think about sprint planning, uh, in the event where we're building our, our our sprint backlog, we're selecting product backlog items to go into that backlog. We're creating a sprint goal. We're breaking down our work into a and then a, in a plan to where we can get started. We're making a lot of decisions, right? This is a mm -hmm. decision heavy event. You know, how can the flow? Which first of all, let's start with which flow metrics would you choose or consider, and then how can they actually help us make those decisions? Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the the. From the set of four metrics that, that we have, which have which we have we have four flow metrics, the one that suits sprint planning the most is throughput, which is the number of things getting done per unit of time. Um, we could make a case for a couple of the other ones as well, but for for the main part, it's it's throughput. H how many things are we getting done? Um, and really, that's that's what we're trying to figure out. One of the things we're trying to figure out in, in sprint planning is Okay, we've figured out what a goal is. Now, how many things can we get done towards that goal so that that goal can actually be accomplished? Um, that is where this metric of throughput comes into play. Um, that's where, yeah, 
Go ahead, Doug. Yeah, something. I mean, I was just going to say because so I'm glad you said that, and I think we'll dig a little bit deeper into what you mean by what you might bring with throughput, right? Mm -hmm. um, because one of the things that we get when we say, well, we can't move away, friend, to your point from story points because we use that as one of the inputs into sprint planning to know how much we take on, right? right. Um, and so this is a good conversation to start as if you're if you're if you're listening to this, if you're looking for an alternative way, if story points aren't working for you, right? And this notion of velocity is just it, it just hasn't worked or it's been kind of awful with the way it's been put into our organization. This is a starting conversation for what you could use as replacing that in sprint planning. Let's be 100% honest about it. This can throughput and what a critique will further expand upon when he says throughput um, and a forecast here, right, with through, throughput, I'm kind of teeing you up there. This is a direct replacement for that for sprint planning. Yeah, the 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 the, uh, the part that people usually miss when they're using something like velocity is getting a notion of risk. Is saying we're, we're, we've got a number. Is that a hundred percent? I'm sure this is the number I'm going to hit, or is it a fifty percent? Is it seventy percent? How confident is the team that we can hit that number? Because um, guess what? Your customers kind of are are waiting for that confidence. They hear a number, they say, "Oh, that is a hundred percent confidence." Usually, isn't yeah. right. So I've been I've been hanging around Dan and Todd quite a bit over the past few years, and I've picked up some big words, and I think I understand them. But I'm going to throw these past you guys and see if this makes sense. When you treat velocity like that, when it's just here's the number and that's what it is, it's a more of a deterministic um, mm -hmm. estimate or forecast, right? What we're trying to do is a probabilistic. We're trying to add a probability to our to our estimate. And so when we have a throughput, we typically would use some kind of method. Um, and I think in this case, we recommend uh, Monte Carlo simulation, and that brings a probabilistic nature to the to the forecast. It tells us for almost percentiles, right? At the this is the ninety five percentile of when this work could be done. This is the eighty five, the seventy five. Gives you like. It, it's very akin to the old uh, confidence intervals, right? So very similar kind of concept if that helps you wrap your head around it. And so basically what we're saying is there's a, you know, if the simulation runs, we run a million simulations and it turns out that we can 95% confidence say that eight things will typically be done by this team. Well, then we might plan for seven or eight things knowing that 95% of the time we will win and 5% of the time, which will happen sometimes, the 5% yes. does happen. I think it's important to realize that, but sometimes that will also happen. Um, did I get that? Are we? Is that yeah. kind of down the right path? Absolutely. Like, and and just to hit that point, five percent is one out of twenty. Yep. It will happen one out of twenty times, uh, and that's exactly what we're trying to get to. What we're saying is, we have a five percent risk with this ninety-five percent forecast. Yep. Now using the same techniques that you talked about, we could also give options of 30% of risk and say I have a 70% confidence. So if I have 95% confidence in getting eight things done, I might have 70% confidence getting 10 things done. Might have a 50% confidence in getting 13 things done. Right. Now we can talk more about risk and talking about oh, how much risk are we willing to take? Uh, do we want to be 95% confident? Do we want to be 70% confident, 50%, whatever those numbers are. And, you know, it's interesting because what this makes you think about, right, <clears throat> is one of the outputs to sprint planning is a, to have a sprint goal, right? Uh, there's nothing in the scrum guide. And I, I've, I've worked with teams that have arrived at that sprint goal. Maybe they walk in and they have an idea. Maybe they don't know until they start to try to figure out what they can do in the sprint. Maybe, maybe, and there, therein lies a really good conversation as it, as it goes with risk between the product owner and developers, Right. So the product owner might come with these grandiose ideas of something that could potentially be a sprinkle and developers like, I, I don't know how much I don't know how much that really is a, a possibility for us. I understand you have that, but like that's like 25 PBIs. Right. And so now we're able to have a risk conversation, as you're saying, in conjunction with the other conversations we're having around scope and things like that with the product owner and, uh, and, and developer during a sprint. So wh whereas in the past, Ryan, what you were saying is before, sometimes people would take a velocity and build a confidence interval, and then they would just go with that and then just jam it down in. Now we're having and associating a probability with something, which to me is a deeper conversation than we were able to have before, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. And it's 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 the mathematics that I like about it. If we run the simulation correctly and it's, you know, the the way that, that Monte Carlo works, maybe we'll do a video in the future about really tearing that apart. So I think it's important, you know, Todd, you're something that you say to me regularly is these tools are great, but no one understands the what's under the hood. And that can cause misconceptions later. And so I think yeah. tearing that apart yeah. is really important. But I, I think for this one in sprint planning, traditionally a scrum team using story points is going down a very deterministic path. And we find that anti-patterns flow out of deterministic forecasts, right? So stakeholder expectations are mismanaged. Um, teams tend to overstuff or overpack sprints. You know, we see a lot of these, these bad behaviors come out of, de out of this deterministic mindset. What we're trying to do with with throughput and then applying Monte Carlo simulation is probabilistic. And to, to Pratik's point, it's finally bringing risk into the conversation explicitly. We're not just kind of munging in or merging in risk with effort, complexity, duration, however you define a story point, because there's a lot of different definitions of what a story point is. Instead, we're saying, here's a number of things that, that, that can happen during a sprint. Here it is over a, a million different trials in a simulation. And now here's a, a an explicit conversation about the risk you're willing to take on. Are you okay with 30%, 20%? And then you get to have a, a rich conversation about what's possible in the upcoming sprint. Any other thoughts there, guys? There's guys. That wasn't a sentence, but <laughs> any we, other? We uh, understood what you said though. Yes, so. it came through. <laughs> So, but, uh, yeah, so, so, so for sprint planning, the, the, the technique, well, the, the flow metric we will re re recommend is throughput. The technique we will recommend is Monte Carlo, how many? Because that's right. really one of the mm -hmm. things we're talking how many, how many things are we looking for? And this could be a, an interesting way to set us up for success in the upcoming sprint, right? Full eyes open on risk, uh, a, a reasonable amount of work hopefully uh, directing towards a sprint goal, which leads us to a product goal, which is helping us hit a product vision. But it starts with the work uh, that you select and, it, and being able to hit all of those other goals. And so- I do have one thing to add here before we go, is yeah. don't just blindly do this and then that's how you plan. Yeah. There's still a conversation to be had. Yep. You don't just say, well, hey, we're good with 85% of the time, so that's what we're going to plan for and move on, right? Still go through the motions of it. You're still using Scrum. It's one input of others that you're supposed to have conversationally. If you've changed your definition of done, if you have really intense retrospective commitments, all of this factors into it. Don't just blindly go at it and paint numbers on it and move forward. But we're saying that this is a better input than, than what velocity and story points are. Well, and, and Todd, to build on your point, it's you can still have the conversations that you would have had during planning poker once you establish the risk. So why is 20, why is this 20% risk present? And then you can still have the same conversations. Well, this area of the code base is difficult to test, or we don't have a lot of understanding in this domain, or missing this particular skill, and then go solve those problems. Mm -hmm. So just because we're moving away from one metric does not mean we're moving away from conversations amongst teammates. Correct. Right. Yeah. Let's separate those two ideas. And so great call outs. Uh, if you want to learn more about this, right, there is an opportunity uh, to join uh, Dan, Todd and I in a flow metrics for scrum teams course. This is a, a new course, um, March 7th and to the 8th. It's a two day class through Pro Kanban. We really want you all to check this out. Right. We're going to continue walking through uh, the different scrum events in upcoming videos. But this is a course that will really root you in how to take full advantage of these metrics um, and also how to apply these effectively on your scrum team so that you can actually use them for, um, you know, for, for success in each event. Uh, Pratik, anything you would add here as, uh, as we wrap up about this particular course? Um, well, for the course itself, the only thing I'll say is these flow metrics exist regardless of whether you're measuring them or not. Right. Uh, if you start measuring them, they'll only help you in making these decisions that we've been talking about. And even though this is a pro Kanban.org course, you don't need to know Kanban to do this. Uh, the flow metrics exist whether you're doing Kanban or Scrum or whatever. Yep. Very good. All right, guys. I think that is a great introduction to uh, the flow metrics in sprint planning. Uh, we'll be back soon with another video about uh, the flow metrics in the other Scrum events. Thanks, everybody.